When I first moved to the Isle of Man about, oh, is it over eight years ago now? I got bored quite quickly, so to help pass the time while I was looking after my mother, I started making LED lamps. And, it's, you know, some of them were very simple, but, but stylish with these sort of olive sort of shaped lamps with the warm white LEDs in them to give it that sort of retro colour. You know, this sort of washed out colour. I should show you that, shouldn't I? I should. Uh, well, tell you what, I'll show you them all. More recently, I made the uh, Deadly Toadstool Lamp. There's a video covering this one. And this is one of the first ones. And after I'd made a few small ones, I decided how many can I actually fit into a tiny little base like this? And I, I think I got about 15 then, I'm not really sure. But to give you an idea of how they've aged, let me show you this. So I'm going to fan these out. Keep in mind these are live at mains voltage at the end. And you'll see I've changed some of the LEDs, but if I turn the light off now, this will give an indication of just the difference in intensities. So these ones are fairly recent, um, but these ones are older, and they really have faded down intensity, and some of them, like this one, have gone out. In fact, you know what? Well, you can't even see that one. One moment, I'm just going to bring the light back. Um, what if I, just for comparison purposes, take a LED like this, unplug this momentarily, Take this one out, plug this in. Noting that it's got uh, long leads that are live. And then I plug this back in. Let's see how bright this one looks compared to the others. Let's, uh, um, it's, it's relatively bright compared to the others. Uh, here's an equivalent one. You can see a, a modest intensity difference, but uh, these ones are sort of side emitting. This one is emitting all its light over the front. It's got a really wide viewing angle. Okay. The point of this was, though, that over time the LEDs degrade and they do lose their intensity. So I'll show you these other lights. This one has also done the same thing and it's introduced flickering. Uh, I'm not sure how bright this is going to look. I can always... Yeah, it's low level. I could cheat. I could bring the intensity up like that and then you'd see them. And the other one with the olive lamps looks like this. It's nice, a washed out tongue look inside those globes. It's actually quite a nice light. Uh, light coming back, shield your eyes. There we go. So, the reason for this video is that I was about to do a live stream. And uh, I've been doing fairly regular live streams during the COVID lockdown. Just put these ones out of the way. And usually in the background, I'll put an LED lamp and in a few of the videos, it was this one, which is a disco, one of these rotating disco lamps, but not rotating, and fitted with the, uh, well, let me show you it. It's fitted with the grow lamps, so it puts out just this, the grow lamp LEDs, so that it puts out that, what they call full spectrum, but it's a really nice pinky magenta colour. But anyway, for variety, I thought... Uh, let's bring this one out and refit it with LEDs. Now, I have to say, I'm not sure how well this is going to work. I'm just going to start pulling LEDs out of it. I was going to fit it with colour-changing LEDs so that it gradually morphs over its whole surface, but I know that it's going to have a couple of quirks if I do that um, because the technology I used in this, I used a, a capacitive dropper and a bridge rectifier and surge limiting resistor and that is it there's no smoothing capacitor in this which means that uh, it has a very slight shimmer because it is quite a lot of leds but uh, more notably if if i use the rgb color changing leds it will potentially uh, cause it to reset because those color changing leds that go to a red green blue cyan magenta yellow white and then just gradually repeat morph around that they don't generally like uh, being put on unsmooth supplies because when you do, they can't hold the position in the, the program. The little counter inside keeps resetting. And instead of doing, doing the red, green, blue thing, it just goes red, green, red, green, blue, red, and it just keeps resetting back to red. And interestingly, it's more likely to do that if the ambient illumination is bright. So if you've made a light that does that, where in a dark room it's absolutely fine, but if there's ambient illumination, it resets, then that's the thing. These LEDs, the circuitry, because it's exposed, is light sensitive. That's why they normally put little black cob chip on boards of blobs of resin over bare chips. So that's me just pulled all the LEDs, well, almost all, a couple more elusive LEDs here. So I can remember building this one. I remember uh, my mum was sitting with me or drinking tea, eating cookies, and I was building this. And I gave her a wee go at things, but she wasn't that interested. But she seemed to be enjoying just hanging around doing this anyway. 
Here are the RGB LEDs. You may see I have a lot. When I buy some LEDs from China, I'm going to have to note that which are the anode and cathode in here? It's pretty obvious. The cathode is the one with the big sort of anvil. When you order LEDs from China and you get some good ones, it often makes sense to order if you really like the LEDs and it's a bit potluck. You just never know what you're getting because eBay really is a dumpster for China stuff. Um, they'll literally go to the market and get the latest thing. But if you're very lucky, they may have bought a stock of these at the same time. And... If you order a thousand of them, it's about 20, 25 pounds uh, in the UK. There's a good chance you'll get it in the original manufacturer's packet. They'll take the original label off it so you can't identify where they got them from. But uh, it will be the metalized anti-static packet sealed from the factory. And that means you have more chance of getting good LEDs and not ones that have been destroyed by being shipped in polythene packs. So here's what I'm going to do. Having just now run out of things to say, I wonder what the power consumption this is. We can check that afterwards rather than bore you because uh, I have a live stream at this point in time, um, which isn't when this video is going out, but um, I'll be doing a live stream within an hour. So I have to finish this fairly quickly. So I'm going to pause momentarily and then I'll come back once I've got these into the light and then we can test it. That's me down to the last four LEDs, so I shall stick these in now and then we can test it. I always like the element of surprise and it's a bit risky actually doing it in video in case it doesn't work. But hey, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Someday I might have put an LED in back to front or I might have uh, not put one in, you know, jammed it down inside the contact instead of on the contact. I The LEDs I dug out the bag there, I was uh, two out. On that, I only needed to get another two of them out the bag, which is quite good. Okay, it's time to see if this is going to work. So theoretically, these should all gradually change colour, or they won't light at all. Let's find out. They've lit up, and see the flashing I was talking about. See how they're not holding this. They suddenly jump back to the red colour. They're not uh, changing smoothly. And this one here is also flickering. But watch what happens when I turn the light off. And they'll all suddenly go stable because uh, there's no uh, nothing to actually disrupt them. And I, if I leave this running now, these will all gradually go through the colour sequence but shift out of sync. This one here is staying red. This one's staying red. They're not happy about that. The, the uh, they must have some slight internal leakage. It'll be a tolerance thing. And some of them will gradually, some of them will occasionally jump and flick back. But it doesn't really matter too much. It still gives an effect. And it gives an interesting sort of sparkle effect when they do jump. Uh, I'm going to take the exposure off. This is a terrible idea. It's going to swamp it out, isn't it? Yeah, it's swamped it out. Tell you what, let's, uh, let's just try and nudge that down like that. Lock it off and yeah. So, um, yeah. Right, okay. Well, I'm just about to do my live stream. Uh, which, incidentally, if you, you're not aware of this, there's a live stream channel for uh, BigClive.com and it's called Big Clive Live. With uh, very similar logo but different colours. And uh, it's reserved for, uh, well, face live streams. Random chat. Partaking of beverages and just basically it's like hanging around with someone down at the pub fundamentally and talking tech. So uh, I'm going to have this sit in the background for that. So I shall go and I shall do that now.